Alright, so the last video cut off because I ran out of storage. And I didn't realize it immediately, so I kind of talked a lot. I'm not sure how much I said at what point, so I might end up repeating some things. But hey, what the hell? So, what's going on here? Well, I think the last thing I said was that Gregory Bateson discovered the feedback loop and no well yes it was a feedback loop but he wasn't the one who discovered it there was a guy before him so I don't want to discredit anybody but it was somebody who had noted it whose name is not something I've made memory of just quite frankly but anyways what he noticed instead was schismogenesis, which is a particular type of feedback loop, which is a feedback loop that expands miscommunication and tensions between people so that, you know, things escalate. Now, he noticed that schismogenesis, when people go through it frequently with each other, affects their mental states. In particular, with the tribe that he was studying, the Iyapmu tribe in Papua New Guinea, he noticed that in them, the women seem to have symptoms in general, most of the women, schizophrenic traits, whereas the men were psychotic in general. And he noticed that it had to do with the modes in which they communicate, in which they communicated with each other. And he called this schismogenesis, so the beginning of a schism, the creation of a schism. And this schism keeps growing, unless and until some variable comes along that can suppress what is happening or just decay it completely and bring it into stasis some way. Now, in the case of the Yatmo people, he felt that the thing keeping these people together in the end, because their, their modes of communication, he felt, were unsustainable. And in effect, you could kill people for no reason. If uh, you were a guy, this is why you would get an oven. You would get celebrated for killing some other person. And they didn't have a system of law, so... You know, like this guy got mad about his pig and he wanted to kill some other guy. This one guy, this is so twisted. This one guy. He, alright, so they had invaded a neighboring tribe. They'd killed a lot of people, alright. They take hostages. And one of these hostages is like this teenage girl. I, I, I forget the age. I want to say like 17. And... So, I mean, she's faced with the harsh truth of what's happening, and she says, listen, guys, I'm with you. Like, whatever, marry me off to whoever you want to. Like, I'm in with whatever you're doing. And, well, that triggered in them, uh, I guess, something less than cooperation, because this one guy invited her to the river shortly thereafter, and proceeded to impale her with a spear. So he speared her. She didn't make it. She didn't make it. And so you could see why being in this kind of environment would be particularly stressful enough to cause someone to get schizophrenic. And you could see why having to deal frequently in an uncontrolled manner with someone who is schizophrenic could provoke symptoms of psychopathy. It would, would drive you wild. So these systems fed into each other as a function of the schizogenic interactions which they had. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it, but schizogenesis is the weapon of choice today. It is what is being used 
to attack America. This is what Russia is doing. It is throwing schismogenic darts in America that then just, they amplify themselves. And they, they create divisions between people. So he's taking the very same phenomenon that provokes psychotic, psychotic states in people, that provokes schizophrenia, that provoke psychop. Forget anything you've heard about chemistry. That's totally wrong. Totally wrong. And we'll get into it. But for now, understand that. So these states feed into each other. So this is what's happening here is that you're getting, I, I think the whole question was of narcissism. So who's narcissism, narcissistic person number one? The United States president. So his narcissism is bouncing off, it is feeding into the people. And, it, and just like in a narcissistic household where you get the black sheep and you get the golden child, well, guess who the golden child is and guess who the black sheep is. And the golden child starts feeding into this feed, this favored state and they start picking on the sibling. And the sibling feels attacked both by the parent and their sibling. So they have no one to get to. So they start entering this hyper self-aware uh, state of, of self-defense. They have to constantly be looking inward. This is this is how these these are the dynamics that are created as these systems interact. So, with with the sibling, that's that's the golden child. That's not a good position to be in either. You you gotta understand that everyone is being affected, even the narcissistic person. And the thing is that all of these systems create narcissism because narcissism is a necessary state because. Now, if you're dealing with a narcissistic parent, you are having then to deal with situations of stress that, in many cases, the parent not meaning any harm just simply does not notice because they are focused on themselves. They're not, when they're blasting the radio at full pitch and they don't realize that, that the, the kid they have in the back is, is like covering his eardrums, it's, th these are conditioned responses. It's not like they're necessarily in some cases yes but that's those are those are those are extremes in most cases in most 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 cases it's just this habit of internal focus that creates negative things like that so the child and the ends up in a lot of interactions that provoke them to constantly have to look inward to check themselves out like oh my god what the hell is going on here and this happens with everyone that enters into these then different states like psychopathy, uh, bipolarity, where you cycle. That's a whole feedback loop, of, like a roller coaster where you come back and forth. With, where, let me see if I can say this in one breath. You get the lows that are so low that when you escape them and the means by which you escape are in effect through a higher clarity that presents itself and when it does you are so relieved of what you've been through that you get euphoric you enter a euphoric state where you think you think you see things so clearly and it could be the case that in many cases you do but the euphoria itself pushes the person forward with too much thrust. So things don't get to build on themselves. And you have to do that. You, you have to build your loops. You have to let them cycle and repeat themselves and, and reinforce themselves if they're the good ones. That's what, what you want to do. But there are feedback loops that we enter into as far as our behavior, our perception, our modes of perception, meaning our reality tunnels, and these get structured by, by the feedback loops 
we enter into. This is what creates a, a reality to them, is, is the feedback from themselves. Is that, for example, imagine you're in a room with one person you know. You know you act with this person in a particular way, whoever this person is. Now, imagine this same person in that same room, all things being equal. And some third person comes in. You know your mode of interaction now. Now shifts. It, it changes a little. Sometimes it changes a lot. Now let's add a third person. But you know that even if we add a third person, we know it's going to change again. But we also know this other thing, is that if that third person is someone different than who that third person could be. For example, if we have any of so many people that could be a third person, you know that the group dynamics will shift according to who that third person is. So, why does that happen? That happens over time when our feedback groups enter into equilibrium to each other, where we know what to expect. We know when I do this, this person does that. When I when they do that and see me do this, they do that. So that you, your interactions balance out over time. Because when you're getting to meet someone, you are in a deviation amplifying mutual causal process. The way in which you interact is not in stasis yet. It hasn't settled. And this is what happens when other people come in. So when you meet someone new, you're in a deviation amplifying mutual causal process with them until you get to know each other. That's, that's when you, you're like, ah, okay, I got you, I got you. And when new variables come in that seem out of place to you, that drives you crazy, right? Those, those are all feedback from so. So, I don't know if I showed this drawing, but maybe I did. Yeah, I did. Did I? Towards the start of it. So, schizogenesis is being used to destroy America. Yeah. And this is the thing. So, that same those same states of, of mind that happen in households, happen in regions, happen in cities, happen in neighborhoods, uh, this is how you go into places and, and they have their own vibe. This is how, how uh, things are different with different people according to different places you go. This is why when you go in some places you feel some way and when you go to another you feel completely different. And you're like, but how am I so feeling so different now? How are the thoughts in me so different? Why do they change? And this is why when autistic people uh, are with some people, those people report to them, listen, I don't see anything wrong with you at all. And in other places, they're like, yeah, you, you really got problems. It's because they're shifting from feedback loop to feedback loop. They're making the shift so that the people they deal with here never see them in that that conditioned response state that they have with these other groups and vice versa that goes both ways so but that happens so you know for example that any behavior you have which seems strange to some people they're like, they're like oh I don't know them for in that sense or I don't I don't know them to do this or maybe it's a surprise to you that your boss likes to play basketball or something like that it, they, they didn't gave you any indication in, in the loops you were interacting with that that that's something they did it's not a feedback loop that entered the the cycle that entered the picture of, of your interactions so let me see what i can move on to here okay so schismogenesis there's another thing that Oh, I, I should tell you this, that uh, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, is a hypnotist. He is a cybernetic master, meaning he knows how to manipulate the feedback loop to control people. Uh, this is, you can see this uh, through studying his Twitter feed. His Twitter feed. Uh, you can see examples of him ad adjusting turns terms, this is why he, it seems out of place and it seems crazy to people like he'll capitalize specific words, but these are the things he wants to jump, so that people jump from this to that, to amplify their thought cycles, to, to basically piss them the fuck off so that they, they can't see clearly. That's, 
He's, he's very studied in cybernetics, I know that for sure. So, here I have a couple things in front of me. And I'm going to touch upon the ones that relate to uh, Gregory Bateson. So, Gregory Bateson also discovered, along with one of his colleagues who named, I don't know, he discovered the double bind. The double bind is a no-win situation. So, a no-win situation is exactly what it sounds like, is you do uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, for example, if you're a dog in a cage and you want to get out of it and the door's open, but when you get close, the door closes, you're damned if you do because the door will close on you. Now, if you stay put and the door stays open and you don't move because you know it's going to close, well, you're damned if you don't. So, narcissistic people in not realizing because this, the, the focus is internal so much, they don't uh, always perceive the effects, the true effects in their interactions with others have. Frequently put people in double binds, and you will notice that, that Trump does this. This is another thing. So, if you enter frequently into a no-win situation, your mind starts to go on you. It's a very, very stressful situation. It, it provokes psychosis. And Gregory Bateson noted that this in his studies, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why uh, our view shifted, if I didn't touch it in that first video, of why it shifted from uh, the correct view, Gregory Bateson's, to the view we have now where everyone's obsessed with internal brain chemistry. Now let me tell you this, the way in which you process information itself causes physiological changes in the brain organ itself. This is why if you're, if you're frequent, people with ep epilepsy, a lot of them if, will deny it in front of the people that caused it. But people with epilepsy have been through stressful situations. It's a form of, of PTSD, is what it is, that creates these, these modes of, of thinking that just feed back, back and forth in, in cycles that are just too small, too rapid, too frequent. And they basically fuck up your thoughts and you just can't function because our brains function on the basis of feedback loops. As information cycles, feedback loops come in, they etch themselves onto our brain organ. And this is why when we do brain scans, you see all these feedback loop cycles in operation. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, hell yeah. So this is a smoking break, and I'll be right back. Really?